We have 7 6 30. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Corey Shalanda. Um, I live on 49 River Drive. Uh, we're doing an addition on the back. Tim had mentioned uh, last week that there was an issue about purview of like just our addition needing to come to you guys and since it's a zone limited business space and I guess I was just told instructed to come visit <laughs> but we okay what do you what do you tell explain to us I, I honestly don't know I he said we always wanted to come I want they wanted me to come chat with you guys and there was an issue about parking obviously we have the business there out front with John next door has let us borrow his field while the construction's being done, so we can. Where's Forty Nine River Drive? Just Klamaski. Just yeah, just just before, just before yeah, well, the old Klamaski the, house, right next to Ron's the house. The lawn jockey business runs out of there. Okay, so you see the landscaping trucks. Okay, there. and they so, don't have room to park cars, so the cars are being parked behind the so paint station. You, okay, uh, yeah, they, they the cars are being parked on uh, Klamaski's land. And they're accessing the, that parking area by using the driveway the of the yeah. sewer pumping station. So they're crossing town property to park on other private property. There are about 15 car, 12 to 15 cars so out there at a time. Yeah, probably about 10. I think it's about what we have for employee wise. So uh, kind of yeah. 13. Okay. Good, yeah. So, so, uh, <laughs> so, so what, what do you? It's a temporary situation ultimately because we're because of the addition with Bermucci construction occupying my entire driveway and what if the construction of business addition no house addition just a, a a new bedroom master bedroom off the back and a and a playroom for the kids on the back side okay. so yeah that's literally the expansion that we're doing and it's just making it so it's impossible Bermucci's probably got three or four trucks in his driveway at any one time plus my own vehicle um so we're moving stuff around in our shop so we have no access to get the back, but we usually store a little bit of our material, which is currently out front. So this is sort of all mitigated by once the construction's done, hopefully in a month and a half, everything goes back to being on our property. They had a lot, you know, I asked chat with John and, and uh, Paul, but asked permission, hey, if you have a spot I could put vehicles just time temporarily. Um, so yeah, but I'm happy to move it back, whatever you guys need done, <laughs> um, whatever the issue might be, I'm happy it, it, to resolve. I mean, resolve it. Is there any objection from the town that you're using their driveway? To make it sound that way, but I didn't. I haven't had a formal thing, so. Um, but okay. wanting to make sure we, we we can't give you permission to use town property. I'm certainly not looking for it. <laughs> you know, so, um, um, I, I would. But there are other people in town that use town property. Nothing's happened to them. Okay. Yeah, that's happens. exactly correct. Yeah. You know, they they they. they no, sir, we don't go there. So I think there are a couple of things swirling around here. Uh, one, we're glad your business is doing so well, but it, you sort of seem to, have, and you're in a limited business district, so that's that's fine. Yeah. Um, one issue is always parking. In a limited business district, we'd still have the same parking requirement, which is two yep. square feet of parking for each square foot of business floor area, yeah. including outdoor storage areas yeah. you're using. Your lot probably doesn't support that. Yeah, probably it not. was. Yeah. It's there as uh, what we call a pre-existing non-conforming lot, or uh, you're actually probably a legal use. But yeah. um, um, maybe we should have met to get, uh, work out a special permit for business for a business in the limited business district. Yeah, um, I think probably when you started, you were. About half the size. So, and to that same point, actually, we are in literally have been all summer beginning the process of starting to find a new location in Hadley. So, which is takes some time. <laughs> so, yep. um, that is something we're trying to do. So, it's sort of even more of a time. We hope to be out within nine to no more than a year out of that space. My wife would love that. So, um, yeah, even though I like my commute, it's 15, minute, 15 uh, feet across. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a temporary thing. It just I'm trying to make sure that no one's <laughs> stepping on their feet. We're not trying. Yeah, you know, I assumed it was, it was a right of way to that space. That's what they've always used when it was when it was using a cow, as a cow pasture, which was recently taken down because John didn't want fences anymore. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So that's where we're. So what we want to sort of stay ahead of the curve on is is parking. That's yeah. that sort of a chronic problem. And in this case, at least you're not spilling over onto you're not parking on Route 47 or anything. Boy, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the bylaw doesn't allow for parking on someone else's premises. So that's something to be 
bear in mind when you're looking for a new location. Yeah, that well, that we've well, a couple of places we found that that's absolutely satisfied. Yep. It's more than enough, which is great. So. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> part of it was just you know suddenly there were cars where there hadn't been cars. Uh, feel, yeah, feel and neatly good. neatly lined up. It looked like a used car lot, which was what one of the first concerns was: is who's doing what? Got so we understand. that part's fine. Um, yeah, I, I, we don't have zoning police out there cruising for violations, yeah. but... Um, well, the field got cut down and all of a sudden you could see the cars. Yeah, there's... Too. I the, was it was like about yeah, <laughs> shortly there, thereafter. There, so. Sort of a sudden change. So I think, you know, we had this conversation with, uh, with other entrepreneurs before. Uh, the ideal movers started out with one truck in uh, the, um, the guy's father's driveway. And then it was two trucks, and then it was three trucks, and there were nine cars when the crew arrived in the morning. And, um, and again, we're, we're glad you're doing well, uh, but uh, at some point you're stretching, you're, you're stretched. And, uh, Agreed. <laughs> yeah, that's so, definitely. I don't think anyone's looking to ask the building inspector to enforce anything, but uh, we just want want you to understand that it's um, that you're in you're in a real middle of a real gray area. I got gotcha. you. And now we're and we're we, we want we we would certainly we want more space. So it's uh, we've, uh, we're at that point and been so and especially this year grew rapidly. So more than our season could allow us to like make changes. So but yeah that's that's our goal. Our intent and I and I understand the spirit of what a limited business is supposed to be. It's meant to be almost an incubator. Which is pretty much what it's done for us, which has been great. So, um, but yeah, so but that's fine. I mean, okay. whatever you need to be do, do it. <laughs> so going forward, whatever wherever you find is a new location, you're in Hadley. You're yeah. going to end up back talking with us. Absolutely. Either if, if you take over something that is already existing, you may be looking for a waiver of site plan approval, or um, you're in limited business, local business, I think we still need to do a special permit, but um, you'll be coming back to us and um, and there are dimensional requirements, so. Seems like it satisfies it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm aware of it now. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I started looking at it, so. But if there is an objection from the town, whether it be the highway department or the sewer department or the select board uh, or the sewer commissioners, uh, they won't be able to drive across that yeah. road so and that's going to be a problem unless yep. you make, make sure you're not blocking access to yeah i think we had an early issue where we had that i think that would have been and we also with bermucci puts his that little loop there at the pump house was putting stuff in i think it made it difficult which might have that you know and then I, I kept we kept monitoring and that's why our staff parks cleanly in two car lengths behind the pump station trying to make sure we, we honor the space as best so we can. So You would have to ask uh, the Kokoskis for a driveway other than okay. for the town because that probably is the issue, yeah. uh, I would think. Because we're crossing town property, right? So uh, or using yeah. town property. And uh, so certainly, like Jim said, we don't we can't give you permission no, to use town, town yeah. property, although it sounds like the board is willing to uh, yield a little bit until yeah. you have your construction done. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what you may not be able to get everything back on at that point, but uh, I mean, we had the same amount when before the construction because the construction was delayed. Was intent was to get through the middle of summer and be done. So. Um, it, it everything fits uh, what was surprisingly we fit almost eight cars plus so ten out front four and two and then the other two or three fit along the side of the driveway it, it perfectly what, what would be a reasonable deadline um i hope <laughs> uh beginning of the year i mean I, I we're hoping to be done by november you know but we don't plan on parking there once there's even close to snow on the ground so it, it's uh and our staff winds down Middle of November, so that would be uh, our intent. Would be no later than the first of the year. Um, we didn't plan on using it for the winter. We really didn't plan on using it that as long as we have. So and we've been using it probably since the beginning of June. And just as well, because once the crops started to get high, we didn't. Uh, 
couldn't see anything. So. <laughs> well, if, if you have problems or things change, just come back and let us know. That's good. I just want to make sure we okay. yeah. did what we need to do for you. Yeah. So. Okay. No, I think under all the circumstances, yeah, it'd be nice if you can find something. And uh, yeah, we're not asking the building inspector or the zoning enforcement officer to enforce anything. Uh, just wanted to know what was Have going on. And we're happy to explain. Yeah. How, do you, how do you spell your last name again? Shalanda. C H L A N D A. C H L A N D A. Yeah. Who's the next main boss? Or on oh, yeah. 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 Juliana and Greg. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Is it Tori or Tony? Tori. T O R Y. Okay, please don't Sorry, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> the doctor's handwriting. <laughs> no, make the doctor's salary. Shalanda? Shalanda. Shalanda. No, no, vowel, no uh, vowel after the H. Nope. C H C H L, yeah, you know, it was, it was a check. It was probably about uh, this long. I'm curious and about derivations. That's all. Awesome. Uh, There's a Gradnik right here. Let me. Give it by a vowel. <laughs> <laughs> so excellent. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Attorney Albano. Yes. Uh, so I, I'm here uh, on behalf of my clients, the uh, the medical marijuana dispensary. Uh, and I think you know that they've been uh, chosen to uh, have one of the adult use facilities and they're going to put it in the same place. So we have to come back in front of you folks again. Uh, and I'm looking for some guidance in terms of really how best to proceed. So um, I guess, and you know, I haven't looked at, uh, too deeply into all of the requirements here, but, but I'm thinking. We went through site plan review, um, you know, with the medical dispensary, and so I'm wondering to what extent that can be short circuited on on this one. And then I think even more significantly, uh, I'm wondering if we can do this as a, an application for a modification or an amendment of the existing special permit rather than going to get an entirely new permit so that there aren't like two separate permits. There would be one permit that basically covers both uses. It is a special permit process. We do need to go through the public hearing process. Right. Whether it's an amendment to or an addition or a new one, I'm not really sure that that's important, is it? Uh, I think it does. So we don't need to do site plan approval per right. se, but yeah. there is also it was site plan approval and the adult use special permit. Right. So it is a different special permit, but hypothetically, if you had asked for it at the same time, we would have. We couldn't have. It wasn't. It wasn't allowed. It wasn't a permit. Well, if, if it had been. Right. If it had been on the books, and you were asking for two special permits, and we would have certainly had the hearing together. The issues are pretty much right. The same. Adult so. use is section thirty, and right. this one's twenty nine for medical. Right. Right. So. I think we just need to hold the public hearing process, go through the special permit process, and I mean, at, at, that, at that public hearing, we can decide. Uh, we'll see attorney bar town council before, because of the town meeting is in three weeks. So we can ask him, you know, can we make it one amended permit? Do we need two, two special permits and see what he tells us? Okay. You know, um, I don't really care which way it's done, as long as we, as long as we do the proper permit process. The actual so, paperwork to me is irrelevant. Right. The, the application is essentially going to be the same. Right. Uh, I, I guess technically it might be change a few we, words. We call it, you know, uh, an you application for modification or application for. You yeah. Know, I mean, uh, you go from medical to adult use, and that's really. But you're going to have both look both uses there, right? Medical correct. and adult use. Yeah. Are you going to walk through the same door to do that? I, I don't know the answer to that yet. Is, is are they different? Are the are the medical marijuana different from adult use marijuana? I, I believe they are. They are. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in terms of, I, I think they have to have different places in the building, uh, and, and I could be wrong. Are but, the products but, different? Uh, actually, uh, now my clients can speak to this better than I can. Okay. But I believe that I read somewhere that the THC content can be greater with the medical marijuana than it is with the, the adult use marijuana. Oh, okay. 
I, I could be wrong, but I thought I saw that somewhere okay. at one point. I, yeah, I just wonder, I mean, you know, and, and we, yeah, we, can, we can discuss that at the, at the public hearing and stuff, so just a curiosity thing. Yeah, yeah. I was at the outreach. Yeah, they, they will definitely know the answer to that. In fact, they're, they're going to review this tape and they're going to say, what, Albano, you don't know this? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah, I mean, you got the, you got, you got the application, just, just yeah. change the, the uh, two sets of mailing labels and, you know, um, we can change the title and that's it. We don't use, like Bill says, we don't need site plan, but with a strictly to be special permit for adult use. Great. Who came up with the name Heirloom? I don't know. So it was going to be Happy and I got to tell you, I, I, because everything I did was oh, with Happy THC. Valley. THC, okay. The Heirloom Collective, THC. I, just think oh. I think it's the concern that obviously we're going to raise is the amount of traffic that you anticipate. Yeah. Uh, are we going to need? Uh, you know, a policeman handy. Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. It's really yeah, that, that's really dropped. Well, that was a big deal really in Northampton. It, it, was, it, it, was, it was a big deal in Amherst. I drive by the Amherst one over and it was a rise. Yeah. I drive by that almost every day. There's cars coming in and out, but you seldom see more than about, I'm going to take a guess, other than the employees. I don't know how many there are, but you seldom see, I want to say, eight cars in a lot. I got to tell you, I've never seen a car. Never, and I, and I go by there a lot. And I know that in Amherst, they when they first opened, they had the, the police presence Correct. out yeah. there. Yeah. And then they said, well, there's no reason for it. And then when the kids came back to school, they said, we're gonna do it again because the kids are now back. And he was again, there one day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there was, I wanna say very low traffic. Right. Well, I mean, he was there basically the crossing guard. Yeah, I mean, well, he was sitting at the lights and that poor person had to have been bored out of their mind sitting there for eight hours a day yeah. watching the, the, the sky turn colors because there was never an issue, not a lot of traffic, and not even, I didn't even see him stop for traffic violation. I don't know if he could, but he, if he was dedicated for one of the, I don't know how that yeah, works, know. you know. But anyways, um, when, they, when they school reopened, they were there for the very first day of school. Yeah. And that was it. They weren't back. Okay. I, I saw them there that one day, but I don't know how long they were there for. How many yeah. days? So. And it's it's well, Northampton when they first opened, they were the only one. Right. Right. So they were inundated. Yeah. Now that you've so got it's novelty. It was novelty. Now that you've got a number of facilities open in the area, there's no reason to all go to one because you can do some picking and choosing. Which one's closest to you? That's what they said at the outreach outreach meeting last week was that when Northampton opened it was one of two on the East Coast so it was oh yeah and it was not I mean, you, you saw a lot of the cars from Connecticut New oh York. you were all over the yeah. place and, and I, I agree I think it was a novelty item people want to see well, what is a, a marijuana store gonna look like inside you, know, you go shopping what are the how they have it yeah. displayed and so on but you know you go through there now and uh, I'm not gonna say that there aren't people lined up outside but it's usually you know, five or ten people out the door, and at the most, at the most. And I drive by there a lot. Yeah, I mean, they, you've got Holyoke. I think one in Holyoke, there's a couple of open in Holyoke. Did they open yet? Uh, They're I supposed know. to. They have. Uh, yeah, no, they, they got one up in Greenfield, I you, think. Yeah, you got Amherst. You got there. There is yeah. there is quite a few around now. Yeah. The, to spread so out, the, to spread the, the university out. drive ones have not opened yet. No. no. So uh, who, who determines? What price they're selling this stuff for in your stores? Is it regulated, or does the does the uh, shop owner determine what, what he's going to sell a gram of marijuana for? Uh, I don't know the answer, but to the best of my knowledge, it is the store that makes that determination. So, mm -hmm. so you're going to see some competition. For sure. Market there. So yeah. I mean, I, I think some of these places. I, I think there were dollar signs in everybody's eyes, and I I think. Uh, some of them aren't going to make it. I really, I think you, I think you can make more muscle money selling scotch and soda than you can selling the joint over the, I really, I really do. Yeah. Yeah. We'll find out. Yeah. Well, that exactly you'll find out yeah. because uh, there was an article I think in the Globe that's saying it's seventy percent higher than it is on the street. Yeah. That's that's a significant difference. Well, the other another thing is that the stuff that you're buying in these stores. Is very pure, no junk in it, 
and it's yeah it's, it's more expensive but you know you're just getting marijuana not a whole bunch of chemicals and additions and who knows what kind of garbage yeah, in there's it. a consistency to what's in the stores because yeah. of the other regulations you know you buy look at you know you know you're not getting fentanyl and methamphetamine and all the other good nasty things yeah you know this is just pot well, anyway I, I think if you can get a reputable black market dealer he's probably gonna be selling selling you pretty good stuff i know a few people have been buying that stuff for years yeah. and they're not going to the dispensary they're going to a yeah. old dealer that's, but anyway that's just the way it that's is. not our <laughs> the store so yeah i guess it does sound like we're kind of leaning towards bringing it in as a uh request to modify the prior special permit by adding a second special permit yeah because the prior one will remain in effect yeah and with the prior one did have a specific clause in it saying this is not uh, adult use because we we do have concerns about the the site for adult use was it only good for two two years three uh, years three years well three years. It, it was a, it was special permits have been modified by the state, whatever it is, that this, and we changed our bylaw that you've got three years from the date of approval to start construction, not open the store. Right. And they have clearly start, started construction, like they completed yeah. construction. Yeah. So, so it doesn't, it, it's not one that lapses after uh, three years. It, it is only lapses if it is not executed within three years. Right. Have, have, when will have, has the medical opened yet, or will they be opening pretty soon? Uh, it has not opened yet, um, and my understanding is that uh, there's some slowdown in in Boston. On it. I, I mean, I understand they have all of their permits and everything, but I, I don't know if it if it might be like an inspection by the state <laughs> to come out here. And I mean, you know how that goes. It's like yeah, they, oh, I mean, yes. they, they got three stores in the, in the state to inspect and they, they can't get them on the schedule, you know. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay. I apologize for being tardy. I was being a we're good... Dock, we're docking you a whole year's pay for that. I was being a good Samaritan and helping my office made jump started cars. So. Okay. Discuss and act on acceptance of Megan's Way's first other business today. Um, I talked to uh, David Nixon, who <coughs> called me when, with uh, Chris Okafer. They have not received as built plans of Megan's Way yet. There, uh, I was, there was a meeting of this uh, uh, project coordinating group this afternoon. And okay. Chris was there, and uh, David was there. Um, the The working theory is that uh, Tom Quinlan said flat out that he had dropped off copies of the as built at DPW. Um, there's no reason to doubt him. Uh, the working theory at the moment is he walked up to the building, handed the plans to someone, and uh, they never got to Chris. Oh, okay. Uh, there may be some other concerns about the um, the project, so I put together a little package of stuff. Pass one of those down. Those. Okay. So the first uh, sheet is uh, from a book that uh, is on the state website. It's uh, streets and ways for uh, surveyors. But this is uh, towards acceptance of public ways. Uh, so when something is offered to the town, most of the work is on the select board's part. They have to, uh, they have to actually have to schedule a public hearing. And uh, they have to uh, go out and do a, a site visit. Um, they went through this with uh, Gooseberry and uh, with Hawley. Okay. Um, so one thing they have to do is refer it to us for our recommendation, um, and that's why uh, that's why it's on. It's up for now. Okay. Um, 
So the second thing in the package is just a plan of the subdivision, and the third is a copy of the decision that I wrote up back in 2014. Okay. And so um, one question is whether um, uh, one requirement is that provide the as built to the highway department and get the written confirmation from the highway department prior to the release of any performance security. I guess we can consider that as part of our recommendation on whether the way should be accepted. So we, um, um, so one, uh, we have no, um, um, written, no written uh, acceptance from DPW. So there are two things um, I want to mention here. Um, um, this is the last subdivision that was approved under our old rules. Okay. And uh, it also is before DPW, so some of the terminology is a little different right. now. Yep. Um, uh, the second thing, uh, we've got performance security. Um, the uh, second thing was that the professional engineer survey was to uh, Certif was to certify that all, that he included all road construction utilities and other improvements. Um, I don't happen to remember. I don't remember getting that. Either. Well, we got the plan. Quinlan dropped off the plan, but I, I don't know whether it had the have certification. To look, have to look in a file. I believe we did get something from somebody that says it was built to plan. The critical thing is the. Uh, Certainly the Asbilt plan and the water shutoffs, uh, but the town has, rather than the peer review engineer examining the water shutoffs, the town wanted that responsibility. Yeah, we wanted a uh, uh, qualified independent uh, water system licensee full-time on site. Yes. Um, oh. Um, Let's see, that was uh, condition two was the DPW and the certification of completion. Uh, we also asked for uh, written easements. That's on page three, item 11. Yeah, I don't know that we have that. That's, the, that's this line that runs across the property here, I'm assuming? Uh, yes, I think so. I can blow it up to a uh, larger scale, but... Well, it's not labeled on this drawing, but that is... Drainage easement. Well, it's also this shaded area here. Oh, so the, oh okay. Drainage. That's what says the drainage easement. That's his drainage okay. easement. Uh, and those shaded areas in front. Okay. Yeah. That must just be an old uh, field road that goes uh, oh, through there. That's what it is. Okay. Um, so. Um, so in the future, will these drainage structures have to be attractive? <laughs> that's not what the well the subdivision the, regulations okay. say. The leaching catch basins. Uh, I've heard of no complaints. Uh, let's see what else. Um, do, 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 do. So okay, so we want to check. Uh, oh yeah, with the certificate of completion. We want to check that we have that um, completion of all required subdivision improvements will be cert uh, certified by a licensed engineer. Um, and uh, don't uh, I think that's about it on yeah. our end. So all that we can tell um, the select board really is that uh, we have no written 
no written recommendation from DPW Correct. and um, drainage easements. And drainage easements. Uh, I'm not sure if they submitted a legal description of the way when they filed. I haven't seen one in the warrant. I believe they su they submitted one last year when they tried to do it the first time. Okay. Um, so. So I'll make a motion to uh, reply to the select board that we have no written DPW opinion and we do not have the written easements. And can't. Do we have to follow up asking for the easements for the towners or, is, or does the DPW ask for them? Don't know. Quinlan probably forgot about it. Um, we can, uh, so to reply to the site board that we can't recommend at this time. Right. See, the difference back then, if the road was put into satisfactory, uh, as according to our you know, subdivision regulations, we had to release all the lots. Now we can hold one lot and we we'll say, Look, nothing's going to happen to release that last lot on doubt. You got this, 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 and this, and then we don't have to chase things down. Okay. So there's a little bit more leverage. But here we're sort of outside the subdivision regulations because we're now in the we're now in the loop that the select board is in okay. under a different statute. So we're just making a record. They've asked us for our opinion, and our opinion is we don't. We can't recommend. We can't recommend at this time. You have a motion. We have a second. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes by the door. Okay. Next one is Dinyabala APR. Uh, didn't. I printed out my copy. Okay. And I, I was having a little trouble following the the question was that they're putting some part of the property is going into APR yeah. and it doesn't seem to have enough frontage to support a building lot, but I don't see that's a problem with the property going into APR. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out on my thing. I had a little bit of trouble reading this. And it says, uh, from this state, Donald Hall, Ronald Hall, um, I am contact, okay, I'm contacting you for assistance with directing me to the appropriate persons regarding questions that have resulted from the Advala APR survey on East Street. Attached is a draft survey of the property that the department is looking to protect. Surveyor had determined the, lot, the split frontage on the property to total 147.4 feet for the land, which will be placed in the APR Lot 2, while excluding out Lot 1 for the dwelling. Our understanding of, our zone, of the zoning dimensional requirements for this location in town have the Nibala parcel on the Ackerford district and require a minimal foot frontage of 200 feet. We will be seeking planning board approval to have this parcel approved as its own standalone APR for the circumstances of any future third party transfer under the restriction. The question being asked, is there an instrument for which the planning board approval can be given for this APR parcel, understanding the total split frontage is less than the minimum zoning minimum and we got a picture of it and this is East Street and I can't determine too well from here where they're talking because its print is so small I think it's probably over here well this is can you see a little little drainage ditch coming through there a little stream yeah. when your ball is Got frontage over here, pre existing. I think the, oh, okay, I think here the we idea go. was that this was once, th th this is the exclusion they want to put in. Right. Which is to take the house out of the APR. So once you take 200 feet of frontage for the house, you, you, 
basically you don't, they're saying you don't have 400 feet of frontage from no. the young men's club. No, but you have 140, okay, so you take the house out with 200 feet, but you have 147 feet, which is more than enough for subdivision road. Yeah. You only need 50 feet for subdivision right. road, so they have more than adequate frontage for subdivision. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're not asking the right question. They're not asking, they're, they're, they're not asking the right question. Yeah. Yes, you could easily put a subdivision here and take out the land for the, for the house. Sure. But that has already been determined on the price. Well, and it's, AP, it's going to be APR, going to be so APR. there are no subdivisions that could ever be proposed. Yeah, but the thing is, that mean, what Jim's saying is we wouldn't object to a lot being cut off with... You have 200 feet for the house. Lot, lot, the lot, the, the house lot right here, that's 200 feet. Yeah. That's the house. They have 200 feet cut out of the property. Okay. So the house is a legal building lot. Correct. You have 147 feet left over. You have enough to put a subdivision road in and put a subdivision back here on all of this property. And the APR only requires 25 feet as a okay. more than a right of way. If, if, you're looking for, if you're looking for an A and R lot, no, it doesn't qualify for an A and R lot. <clears throat> but with 147 feet of frontage, and 37 acres. Can you read, read the question again, Jim, what they're asking? Uh, okay. It doesn't make sense. They're asking the wrong question. They're asking the wrong okay. question. Attached is a draft survey of the property that the department is looking to protect. The survey has determined the split frontage on a property to total 147.4 feet for the land, which will be placed in an APR lot, lot number two while excluding, uh, excluding out lot one for the dwelling. Our understanding of the zoning dimensional requirement for this location in town have the Dibala parcel in the Aquifer district and required minimum frontage is 200 feet. We will be seeking planning board approval to have this parcel approved as its own standalone APR lot for the circumstances of any future third party transfer. So the house has 200 feet legal lot. You have 147.4 feet left over and 70, no, I'm sorry, 37 acres. So you've got more than adequate frontage for a subdivision and anything else. I could see if this came up previous to that, that would be part of the negotiation if I were the owner that I have the ability to put a subdivision in or a building lot there, but that has already been determined. We, we don't have to worry about that. I, that's correct. Yeah. We, we just have to worry about are these two legal lots. That is a legal house lot, building lot, where the house is, and that is a legal lot with 147 foot frontage to put in a subdivision. That's what it comes down to. We don't I'm need, not asking about a subdivision. We don't need to worry. Well, we, we would sign an ANR. We would sign that ANR. Plan. We would sign that ANR right. plan. That's, That's what it comes down to. Yes. Because you could certainly put a road in and put a subdivision. Whether or not you want to is another story. Obviously, they don't want to, but you certainly could. You got 37 acres to put a road in and build. And you're not crossing any wetlands here. That's way over here. And there will be an endorsement that. Uh, well, actually, you are crossing the ditch. You are crossing a ditch there, but that's that's a ditch, and you put a little bridge over it. Yes. So you just need a not a building lot of uh, uh, endorsement on that part. So right. That's right. So do we respond to this, or what do we do? I'll. Uh, I think it came to me indirectly. Uh, yeah. This Ron Paul okay. wrote to. to Sure. Okay. Uh, Ron Hall wrote to David Nixon, who wrote to me. So, so who signed that one? Ronald Hall, which is the Mass State of Mass. Uh, he is at um, Mass Department of Agricultural Resources. I am not uh, sure what his, uh, I, his name comes up all the time. I guess he is uh, uh, the. Um, replacement for uh, Rich Hubbard as sort of the, the guru of the APR program. Okay. Ron Paul, P-A-U-L? Uh, Ronald Paul. Paul, H-A-L-L. Paul, Paul. 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 Yes. 
So the old uh, the old announcer on yeah. WHMP. Uh, uh, Davenport Hall. I was going to say if it was Paul, it's been shortened from some yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, planning board procedures. So there was a meeting of this projects coordination group today, and uh, there is um, apparently there's been a recurrence of people coming to see us, and then going out and doing things that the planning board approved without regard to whether um, the um, anybody else has a voice in this. So, um, you know, apparently one example is the um, um, farm stand on Rocky Hill. Well, the farm stand on Rocky Hill, yes, there are some, there apparently are a lot of compliance issues there and questions about whether it needs to be sprinklered, uh, depending on what they want to do there. Okay. Um, a lot of things that were never within our purview to say that, yeah, we think you do qualify for the zoning exemption. Uh, another example given was the uh, laundromat that went in. Um, apparently, they did some interior work there without bothering to apply for wiring permits or plumbing permits. They moving their machines in. Uh, Tim and the fire chief said they were unaware that there was a business that there was even a business there until they went to the building to check out some concerns they had about the bagel uh, place. So uh, apparently among other things there are uh, some different uh, sprinkler requirements for facilities like laundromats, especially after the disaster with the laundromat fire. By stands. By stands. Uh, and another one was, um, yeah, I think it was the, uh, oh, uh, some of the sprinklers that were put into these multi-use buildings that we had previously approved have to be modified based on the use of the space. Uh, I think the dentists may require a higher level of sprinklering than, say, the place that does nails. Um, so, uh, Tim was very much asked, can we get some protocol in place to say, if someone comes in to see us, I want a waiver of site plan approval, we refer them to Tim and uh, ask them to come back in two weeks after they've talked to Tim. Um, I was taking the position that if there is no zoning issue, if we don't see any zoning issue when someone comes in for a waiver, uh, we just as soon clear it off our docket and not drag it out. Not We don't need to see people twice um, to tell them we, we still don't see a zoning issue. But Tim was very concerned that people seem to think that we are the super board that does everything. Yeah, I, so um, what I did here was most of what is on this page is actually what it's actually found in the boilerplate of our site plan approval bylaw. Uh, and the point I wanted to make mainly is the one in bold that when we waive site plan approval, that's all we're doing. We're not giving you a green light to uh, uh, open a business. We're just saying that we don't see any need for further zoning review. But then some standard conditions that if you say you're not doing exterior alterations, don't do exterior alterations without telling us. Um, don't move in trailers and you have to talk to these other boards. So you're saying that every time we give a waiver, we give them this piece of paper. Yes. That sounds like a good idea. Excellent idea. And I think we ought to not only give them the piece of paper, but I may, may even see if we can post this to our Web page as uh, yeah probably want to attach it to any decision. Well, we could do is we could we could have this is an idea. We give them the waiver, we give them a copy, they sign this copy, and we attach it to our little simple waiver that they received it. Mm -hmm. 
the just to cover the base. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can throw in a. I can tweak it. Yeah. Put, put a, a little signature line. place on the bottom someplace and yeah. the date. We're just saying that they acknowledge re having received. So we, you don't yeah. have to read it. You don't have to like it. Acknowledge receipt. Just you. We've had to do this. Yes. Okay. Um, Good idea. So uh, I did circulate it around to that to the group, and um, I got generally positive feedback. Um, so that's a good idea. Um, yeah, it, it's, I did not realize how much of a problem it seemed to be. Yeah, I, I was, I'm surprised. Well, I'm not we won't surprised. go there. Whatever. So I made extra copies at this point. Um, Maybe you just hold on to them with, okay. with, with you know, clip them to those yeah. uh, those speed memos you have to Tim, so that we won't forget to right. pass one out. So basically, you're going to add a signature. I'll add a signature line. line. I, you know, I, I made twenty or fifteen copies, yeah. so I think we'll just uh, we can do them signs for now. Yeah, that's good. And that, I'll, when I have signed it, I'll put a put a little line on there, acknowledge receipt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something like that. Date. Yeah. See, the bureau is being painted on the painted uh, bean property. I thought it was going to be a decal. They're mm -hmm. painting it. Well, it's they're putting it up. Okay, yeah. okay. Because yeah, they said they were going it looks to. Looks pretty uh, nice. This one yeah. vinyl. Yeah. Yeah, a vinyl, big vinyl. That's a big vinyl sign. Yeah, it was like 16, no, 30 something feet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was huge, yeah. You would think that would oil can or well, ripple or, I guess they're going to I mean, you look at, for example, look at McDonald's trailers when they drive down the road. Those are all vinyl decals on the side of vinyl, uh, uh, McDonald's trailer. A big, uh, you know, the, with, a, with a picture of the chicken and the eggs and all the different yeah. oh, sandwiches. Yeah. Those yeah. are all vinyl decals. On the side of this trailer. So it's like uh, wallpaper. Anything to add to next week's agenda beyond what's there already? Public hearings. Uh, no. We got two two zone articles. The general bylaw. I'm still waiting to hear back from Joel on the exact wording of amending the uh, section 24. I've called him twice. Left messages. Talked to him. I've left him emails. I put a word in there, kind of a phrase for now. You probably get back to us a couple of days before the town meeting mm -hmm. to amend it. Well, it's only it's only a sentence, so it can be easily amended on town meeting before we have to. I'm not worried about that. Okay. Can you refresh my memory and public what the what the trigger was for the senior housing overlay expansion? The there was a petition article to extend the senior housing overlay to a parcel on the other side of the bike path to parcels what is it? Um, it basically goes almost yeah. between it's from river drive to the back end of the old supply building where the water tower is yep. it's on the south it's behind the houses on the south side of newton lane Okay. Yeah, it's a five or six acre parcel. And that was to enable someone? Senior housing. Yeah. So somebody wants to put senior housing there. Right. The owner is petitioning on the, uh, Barry Roberts and Tom Reedy, his yeah. lawyer, were at the select board meeting last week to speak to that. Okay. They, uh, um, what they said was that they, they, they were, missed the, the filing deadline he said he talked to someone on the planning board about what the uh, filing deadline was when the warrant was going to close but apparently it closed earlier uh he didn't say who he spoke to i don't recall if i spoke to him or anyway i, I spoke to i spoke to tom rady about it but i said you need to get you you and you can get the, you need to get the request in you probably didn't hear that part of it yeah i said but you can hold off on getting us the actual wording and make a decision but you need to get a request in by September 10th, I think it was. So the select board was reopening the warrant anyway to add a couple of other things. Mm -hmm. And they took the position that if this had been submitted timely, it would have been on. So they weren't going to 
be harsh about it. Uh, there were some of the neighbors from, uh, this was on about, oh, for, for uh, annual town meeting and was withdrawn. Uh, there was going to be a discussion with the neighbors about whether they were willing to buy, basically enlarge their backyards by buying up the land. And that, those negotiations apparently fell through. Um, there will be, um, I anticipate that the neighbors will be attending in force for the public hearing. I did speak with one of the neighbors and tried to make it, I think I got it across that this is going to, our public hearing will not keep this from going to town meeting. Uh, our recommendation is advisory to town meeting. It's on the warrant by petition. It will be, uh, it will get to town meeting floor. Um, but they're free to come and um, talk about it as much as they want. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I also. And so after this, after that hearing, we would make our recommendation which which would be written into the warrant either we are no, for no, it or no, against no, it? No, 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 will not oh. be written into the warrant. Oh, okay. It'll just be, we'll have the public hearing, we will vote to make a recommendation at the end of that particular part of the public hearing, either yay or nay, we cannot make a decision. We Normally, you back up a little bit, hmm. the planning board has three options. Recommend in favor, recommend against, or if the public hearing is more than 21 days before the town meeting, they can make no recommendation. Neutral. This public hearing is being held a week and a couple of days before the public hearing, so we have to make a recommendation either yay or nay. Yeah. And we simply, it's a verbal recommendation. We make the vote, of the, we make it here, it's a simple majority. And on town meeting floor, they'll introduce the article, make the motion second, very first comment is I make or Bill makes whoever is there at the time, depending. This is the planning board recommendation, and then discussion ensues. Now, where we get a veto is if it is turned down, the same proposal can't come back for two years unless we affirmatively recommend that it be brought back. Yeah. We did that once. Uh, someone had tacked a, uh, there, there were a lot of, it turned out to be very contentious zoning issues, and some poor guy wanted to expand, re wanted to rezone his one parcel of land, and um, everything got voted down that year. So we did, uh, for the fall town meeting, recommend that he be brought back and be allowed to make his case without all of the other Staff. Um, he came back. It didn't go through, and anyway, but yeah. uh, at least he had a fair chance to do it and right. not get swamped by us. But uh, this parcel can only come if this parcel doesn't pass this time. It can't come back for two years without our explicit approval. Um, I also made a point of uh, the, you may gather the select board was discussing the warrant. Uh, so I made a point, uh, they had tagged the Megan's Way and uh, acceptance and the rezoning, this rezoning proposal as planning board will present. And I tried, I, I said that no, we're not going to present. We are, uh, these are by petition, it has to be read that way and when you stand up and look for someone to speak to this, you're looking to the petitioner, not to the planning board. We'll make the recommendation on our part, but that's it. We'll do our statutory obligation, but we are not, uh, we are not presenting these. <laughs> um, and one other thing, it turns out it's a... Uh, well, we I, can speak as citizens. You can, can speak as citizens, citizens. Yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. But we're just, if we're not taking any official responsibility no. for this. Uh, I do want to point out one other thing, I, that the... Um, the two articles, it doesn't directly involve us, but sp speaking as, as citizens, the two articles on uh, removing Zaturka Park from 93, from uh, Article 90, from constitutional protection and sub, I'm sorry, removing North Hadley Ball Field from constitutional open space protection and substituting Zaturka Park for that, 
uh, have been placed back on the warrant without the, without any changes from the uh, those were voted down at the annual town meeting uh, I gather that maybe the historical commission is asked to have them put back on um, at least someone from the historical commission was here to speak in favor of having them on hmm. but I asked uh, David Nixon if there were any changes he said no I cut and pasted so Turka is the park at the corner of Huntington and Breckenridge correct yes. um, so we'll we'll get to but who requested it be brought back before town meeting in the select board? Uh, well, they didn't object. Uh, I, there's someone from the historical commission was here saying that they they've been talking to people who felt confused by it all and would have voted differently had they not been confused. So um, David uh, Phil made a comment about uh, we have an unfortunate habit of um, bringing back revoting things that didn't come out the way we liked them. So, um, so we'll see how that plays out. Um, okay. Um, I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Anybody else have anything? I have some questions. Um, oh, the, our, I think we talked about that. That was the. Oh, I, I guess I just wanted to acknowledge that we had received a, a couple of emails from uh, Susan Del Molino. Um, I don't know if she was looking for us to weigh in on those. Or nope, that, that's about the marijuana open grow. Right. And, and one was about him. The, that, that was him, yeah. And, and one was about the number of people in a, and so she shared some opinions. Um, yeah, well, they're, they're, they're also they're putting us from camera because I guess a couple of fields have been broke and getting Part, why the stealing hemp? I have no idea. Um, but there's cameras, and they caught some people. I saw that in the news, yeah. and they're doing some stuff on that. Yeah, she had written about the smell, yeah. and 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 her opinion. In her opinion, in in her opinion. It, if you somebody had some cut this morning, fresh cut, it smells now. It's a lot different than what was brought in before. Yeah, so it's a but, seasonal. Yeah. yeah, but but it doesn't smell like a skunk. No. I would you you go go to the uh, Big Y gas station and get gas over here at Big Y. The whole field behind a Big Y gas station on a dead quiet day is all him. Or the Methodist Church. Okay. There. And you can just stand here and get gas yeah. and walk over to the field and smell it. And it's got a different odor. It doesn't smell like a skunk. It doesn't smell like tobacco. It doesn't smell like tea. It's different. But it's not like oh my gosh, if that was around me, I couldn't take it. Yeah. It's just, it's got an odor, you know, name a crop that doesn't have an odor. So. Yeah, that was how I read her. She basically said it, if it smelled like skunk, it was like two day old skunk. She said it was, it was, it was different, at, at, yeah. at, as you said. So, um, um, for the time being, you know, we're, we got a couple of questions for, for attorney Bard, but I mean, there was a recent land court decision where they said that, uh, Marijuana was an agricultural crop, and there, there are some people that are on the opinion, excuse me, that that means that it's no longer agriculturally exempt, and that is not the case. We don't believe that. We don't believe that's the case, and we're going to verify that with Attorney Bard. And you know, I'm still not opposed to letting somebody, you know, there's a problem with open growing, in that how do you and it's a farmer's issue, and that's not a it's not a growing issue, and that you don't want marijuana to go to seed. You want to keep it as a bud. That's where the THC is. If it goes to bud, if it goes to seed, it's a not exactly a very useful crop. And that's only the female plant. So how do you prevent cross pollination if it's open grow? Because somebody a few miles away, I'm assuming, could cross pollinate your crop. I don't know that. Maybe mm -hmm. not. Could be pollinated and not go to seed. You're going to pick it quickly. That's all you're going to do. You're going to harvest it. Maybe that's what the people were doing at night. Yeah. Well, that's hemp. Hemp has <laughs> hemp has virtually no THC. Anyways, um, the only other thing I had a question about was there's a 
I think we're there's going to be a bylaw change voted on for farm stand. Was that the thing we talked about about the twenty five percent? There's no. Is that going to be on the warrant? No. no. There's okay. nothing on a by bylaw about for twenty five percent that I know of. Yeah, I just unless no, nothing we could put on a, a town warrant would affect okay. the zoning act. Okay. The exemption is in Chapter Forty A, Section Three, yeah. which are topics that zoning may not regulate. Yes. So we may not. Okay. We can't do. We can't change okay. that. Okay. I know there has. There have been some discussions going on between the building inspector and the proprietor of the farm stand that just reopened uh, Rocky Hill Road, but I don't believe I saw anything on the warrant about that. Okay. Is that it? Good. Oh, I have. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John.